Hello, Moobit here with another Filmic Fridays kind of thing, although it's actually Thursday uh, as I record this. It's uh, it's Poles Day, um, and we are currently walking, myself and Rory, hey, baby. Sit. to the polling station because uh, that is what one does on polling day. Um, problem is, it's uh, minus one, as you can tell from the, uh, from the attire I'm wearing. It's minus one and raining. Much to Rory's annoyance. A bit worried about this election, actually. Um, especially as a person with a diagnosed mental health issue. Um, obviously not as severe as people in hospital things, but the mental health services have been decimated under the Conservative rule at the moment. Hey, baby. Yes. Decided uh, I couldn't really uh, vlog and walk him and vote at the same time. So uh, we've just come back and we're going to talk about it here. Speaking of which, who would you vote for, Rory? Me votes Gravy Bones. Would you? Gravy Bones? Yeah. But Gravy Bones aren't on the list. Aww. Would you vote for a meaty chunk? Uh, yeah, right then. I love that. Yeah? Yeah. You going to balance? No, give You going to balance? No. No, oh, don't make me do the trick. Stay. Stay. Oh. Me eats. Me eats now. I can't reach it. Good boy. Go for it. <laughs> We've voted. Um, well, I voted. He can't vote because he's a dog, unfortunately, which I think is doggish, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess I'm a bit worried about this election. Um, it is, at the moment of filming, it's minus one and raining. Um, I'm hoping that doesn't put people off, no matter who, which party you um, vote for. Because it's important that we do, whichever way, you, you know, whichever your political leanings are, I guess. Luckily we did see a few people out getting out of taxis and elderly people and, and stuff like that. Um, that's good. Um, in terms of the way I'm voting, did see many young people there, which is a worry. Young people tend to vote left. Um, it's no secret, um, although Moot Media and Team Reflector are politically neutral, we try to be, um, and we respect anyone who to have their own opinions, uh, it's no secret that I'm left wing. It shouldn't really come as a surprise, really, because most creatives in our experience tend to lean more towards the left anyway. It's something about... Uh, you know, drama and, and film and performing arts in general that tends to be more left-wing and more socialist and more, you know, hippie types and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's another reason, isn't there? Yeah. He's one of the reasons, because he's my assistant's dog, as you know, um, and he keeps me company um, on the days when my wife and daughter are out, which they are at the moment. And it's another reason I'm, I'm voting left this t um, you know, on this election. It is because I'm genuinely worried uh, about my own future uh, and that of people like me. Now, I'm no politician. I'm no statistician. I'm no good. statistician, even. Yeah. yeah. Long words no are hard these days. I'm not a good analyst anymore because my brain doesn't work the same. You're telling me. Some days I'm not even sure I'm a good man anymore. But there you go. <laughs> you are, <laughs> I, suppose. I can only give you my opinion based on my experiences. And, and hopefully you. this rings true with some of you that but I, can smell them. I am desperately worried about mine and my family's future because of this, because of my mental health no. issues. Treats, um, don't you? Lie down, mate. Lie Wait. down. Lie down, you get a treat. Good but, but the, 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 the streets, look. I knew it, look. I told you. You've been on that on me, haven't you? Um, I try to bring levity to, to my mental health situation with, uh, with him reporting in on my activities and... It's time for... Mental Health Check-In of the Week. Yeah, it's been alright, actually, yeah. Mental Health Check-In. You know, just being open about it in vlogs as some of you have seen, but I can tell you 
from someone who is is in the mental health care system right now, it has been absolutely destroyed under ten years of the Tories. The, it's just it's the funding has gone. That the appointments aren't there. The emergency care is non-existent. The the, the support networks the, in the community that you know. I wasn't really one for going to sort of round robin therapies and things because I get nervous around people that I don't know. Um, well, yeah, that's why you got me in the first place, isn't it? At least I'd get nervous like that when I'm feeling vulnerable, and I'm never more vulnerable than when I'm talking about this stuff. Um, yeah, he does actually. He's not great. But I can tell you that at the height of my last. Uh, breakdown where you know I lost everything because of it uh, um, I was waiting five months yeah I think five months and that was lucky because I got a cancellation cancellation of somebody although I don't know why that person cancelled you can pretty much take a guess why that person is no longer needing consultant appointments um, and uh you, know what? you got me mate. I know, I mean. mate. See he 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 can tell when I'm getting upset. Oh, <laughs> it's my job. It's all right, I know, thank you. Thank you, Rory. Um you right. Yeah. Okay. I you know, I was waiting whatever it was, five months or more. Um I was told that was lucky. I was and this is at a height of me actively trying to end my life. Um and yet I was told I had to, to uh, you know, there's nothing they could do that. I, I had to wait for appointments. Um, you know, you got charities like Samaritans and things. Uh, details are in the description below if you need that. Um, but in terms of actual medical care, um, I was on a long waiting list, as are everyone else, as is everyone else even now. Uh, and that waiting list is getting longer and longer Duff and longer. You, and you. Even once I'd got in with the consultant, I only actually got uh, a limited number of appointments with him. Yeah, there's a row um, came in then, didn't it? And because of the demand that mm. is out there. And he has referred me back to my GP, who again is wonderful, um, as are all his staff and everything, and they're doing the best they can. But it's got to the stage where my GP is is ringing me just randomly in his own time from his house because I can't get appointments with him because I uh, you know it, it's you have to phone at literally seven fifty nine and just keep pressing redial 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 like that to get through and, and it's just so stressful for people like me with, with, with severe anxiety and PTSD symptoms and everything it, it actually makes me worse trying to get the appointment that's supposed to make me feel better you know um, and uh, whew, uh, so I actively stopped uh, even trying to get through and then you know you eventually get through and there's no appointments you know because again they are stretched to the limits and it's not their fault as I, I can tell you you know 15 years ago when I first moved to this to this area of Nottingham um, it was a lot better um, you, they had a system they had enough doctors where they had a system where you, it was like a barber's you turned up you took a number uh, as long as you didn't mind which doctor you saw you got in and yay and they had to stop that because of the funding and things um or if you wanted to see a specific doctor, you could just phone and, and make an appointment either during the day or, or during the afternoon. And for the most part, you, you'd get through and you'd get to see the right person about the right thing. And, you know, and now it's just like a free for all. And it's so stressful. Oh, mate, you got an itch. I know, mate. I know. It's OK. It's OK. <laughs> and so on the selfish level, you can understand how another four years, five years even, of the Tories in power with, with all the cutbacks and everything that they're doing, how that is making me 
fear for literally my my own life um because if i can't get the help i need and i can't and it, especially and with brexit and things there's going to be drug shortages that's just an inevitability i can speak as an ex-pharmacist technician that you know the, the drug supply chain is very complex and multi-layered um they the raw ingredients are go, come from one country to another country when they get combined there and then they go to another country and they get made into for example tablets there and they'll go to another country Bingo. and get boxed up in mm-hmm. the f- relevant packaging for the relevant pharmaceutical company and then they'll go for another ship to to a holding area in in england and blah, blah, blah. i yeah so if, if i basically i had a day actually when i was on hymns of avaras and my 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 crew will tell you this uh, it was a day where i forgot to take my daytime tablets and at first it was fine uh, but day two because i forgot to bring them it was on an overnight uh, you know voluntary thing by day two i was a wreck i couldn't understand anything anyone was saying uh, my voice had gone I, I forgot how to speak i was dropping things i was making mistakes and i was just point it was useless um i have an amazing crew thank you guys i have an amazing crew who understand that and and the whole point of his is, is a lot of the crew have mental health issues themselves so we're all very aware of each other's shortcomings and and, and we bridge each other and, and it, it, it was fine and we got we got the shoot done but yeah uh that's lo- that's forgetting like one tablet if, if i get cut off for a week or two you know through you know everyone's queuing to get off the ships and all that kind of stuff you know with the customs thing I, they, I'm, I'm a dead man basically um they and this guy between them are the only thing that's keeping me going and keeping me cognito enough to not be suicidal again and and have you know still have control of my own mind and that is fucking terrifying i'm sorry to swear but it is um and it's not just that i mean obviously as a as a, as a needs of the when he out made the needs of the few kind of guy um it's probably come to all your attentions that the, the homeless situation in pretty much every town up and down the country is, is horrible for them um there, there's more homeless than ever um i myself as you guys might know i spend any profits that i get on doing free work for for charities and you know videos or or you know recording interviews for them for the websites whatever um and i was working with a good friend of mine from from the game dad's days actually um give you an example of tories for you <laughs> in general in my experience I've interviewed quite a few in my time, actually, and they've all been pretty much the same. Uh, I'm not saying all of you are the same, or people who vote for them are the same, I'm just I'm talking about the ministers I've met. And it was this event where uh, it was a sponsored sleep rough thing, and, and it was in this it was in this multi-story car park, and, uh, you know, school kids and the local homeless population come round, and, and, and the homeless guys were, were getting free meals and everything which is awesome and the, the, the kids from the schools were you know getting subsidized meals and things like that and they had loads of cardboard donated from various places and making shelters basically to sleep rough in the car park um overnight and the local mp at the time and i think still yeah it still is for that area what is conservative um met up, i was there to interview with him and, and basically film him doing a speech and things like that seemed like an okay guy at first but needless to say he turned up with an entourage of people and i'm talking like eight nine people all on ipads with you know portable uh wi-fi roots type things and uh, you know all dressed up to the nines blah 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 local press following him click 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 you know you, you can understand the picture not once did i see him speak to any of the homeless people who were there who were helping out and you know except for when the press were pointing the cameras at him and he'd be like suddenly oh how are you doing sir how long have you been on the streets blah 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 shaking hands and everything 
second the press had turned the backs they was they, they were all sat in a circle they made like a a little den of cardboard a, a wall. they literally made a wall of cardboard round themselves and they were sat on the floor they were surrounded by homeless people with their backs all sat in a circle with their backs to everyone and they're all there tapping and tweeting and taking selfies making sure there was uh, someone in the background yeah okay but there you go and I was looking at the Twitter feed and oh look look we're here helping the homeless people blah 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 and they'd literally built a wall of cardboard boxes around themselves so that no one could come in and speak to them and things whereas everyone else was there volunteering and they're all going around they're all trying to help each other and talk to each other and help each other build shelters and you know some of the homeless people were talking to the kids and, and you know letting them know what it's like to live on the streets and things and it was all like a community thing but these guys were just in this their little wall of cardboard making sure to get people in the background taking selfies of each other and all that kind of stuff and yeah it was just unbelievable it was like like an us and them situation that's what it felt like and that's the bit you don't see and I'm not saying it's just Tories this is just an example of the blatant disregard and, and just uncaring attitude of a lot of career politicians and on the most part it is people on the right I'm not saying that because I vote left I'm just saying just and I'm not saying the people on the right on the left wing are, are, are infallible because a lot of them aren't but it, it's just this is the state of the country that we live in right now everything's just a photo op nobody thinks about the, the actual implications of what everyday people like you and me are going through and and people worse off than us people on the streets people with worse mental health issues than, than me where they, they, they have to be hospitalised and there's no funding that, and I can tell you that I've worked as a mental health nurse before all of this many 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 decades ago in a previous life and it was bad enough then and it's worse now because I still know the people I work with and, and I talk to them regularly on Facebook and things like that and, and it, it's bad out there uh, and that's why I voted Labour this time because everyone says oh they don't like, they're not voting Labour because they don't like Corbyn it's not it, it's not a reality TV show guys you're voting for policies not people you're not even voting for Corbyn anyway unless you happen to live in the constituency that see, he's standing in you're not voting for Corbyn. You're voting for the local MP who will support you locally and it look after your interests locally. But of course, at the end of the day, uh, like my colleague Nick says, um, whoever wins, the victory isn't the winning the election. The victory for all of us is in the actual implementations of the promises in whoever's manifesto. So I would sooner go for this Corbyn-led government, uh, in a potential Corbyn-led government who w could only meet half of their manifesto pledges than have another five years of the Conservatives with their manifesto if they manage to implement half of their um, things. Because honestly, if if they keep cutting the services that, that myself and, and my family use on a regular basis, I'm a dead man. I, I literally I won't be here I'm convinced of that it might sound a bit over dramatic but I, I, that's that's how it feels and that is really bloody scary um, yeah so please if, you, if you've not I guess point is I love all you guys anyway. Vote for who you think is best for you, but just go out and vote. Either way, any party, whatever, just do it. Because, and try to, when you do do it, to think, you know, forget Brexit and all that. Think about the wider picture, what kind of country you want to live in yourself. And put yourself in the shoes of the worst person you can think of if it's your granny or, or someone your uncle with mental health issues or you know you've heard of a mate you used to go to school with who's living on the streets think of them and vote in their best interests and then your best interests will will come anyway i think that's that's the way to live anyway it is that's my 
philosophy anyway. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. It's a bit rambly. I've got a lot of editing to do on this one, but yeah. Um, get out there, get a brolly, get a taxi, get out there and vote. I mean, you don't have to tell me who you vote for, but let me know your thoughts on what I've said below. Um, I hope that at least hearing the story firsthand of some of the things that, that we've gone through has helped you to make hopefully the right decision. Um, and either way, I'll see you at the next video. Ta-ra. I like to move it, move it, bit, bit, bit.